But I remember, I guess it was like two years ago, and reading that some independent wrestlers were on a, in a and I'm probably getting this wrong, and you can tell me after, we're in a, on a car trip, hit some black ice or whatever, slid off the highway and trashed the car and were totally messed up and needed help with their hospital insurance, hospital bills. And I'd never met the guys before. Uh, never even heard of them before, but I I just really like connected with it because we used to get four or five in a car and drive up in north, uh, northern you know in Canada up in Alberta and in Manitoba and those roads were very icy too and there's a few times we were like whoa whoa that was close it could have just as easily have went that way for us so I donated some money and then years later I find out that one of those guys was you Daniel Garcia and I was like he never f- told me I've talked to this guy like five or six times. We actually used that in our very first Jericho Appreciation Society promo. But kind of tell me about that night. And, 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 and first of all, why didn't you ever mention it to me that that was that we did that? Well, I mentioned it to you the first time I was an extra here. Oh, okay. I, m- I remember me and a couple of the Buffalo guys that were here. We came up and like thanked you for your donation. Oh, okay, and cool. stuff like that. But you're probably just kind of more of a nameless, faceless, yeah, dark guy. At that yeah, point, you, right? you didn't know who I was at that point. Right. Um, but yeah, we were on our way home from a show in Montreal booked by um, Carl LaDuc, the guy who got beat up in Wrestling with Shadows by Stu Hart in the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Abrahantes was also in that scene as well, I found out. Was he really? Yeah, he was. Yeah, we were on our way home from a show in Montreal. What is that, about a two-hour drive or so? Or? No, Montreal to Buffalo is probably like six, seven oh, okay. hours. Okay, I was thinking Albany. Yeah, you gotta go yeah right. so we, um, it's like four in the morning. We're about an hour out from home. Like We were so close to being home. And we've done this drive like so many times. We were getting booked in Montreal every single month, and um, we just hit some black ice. The car spun out, and we crashed right into, like, the end of the guardrail. So the guardrail basically splits the car in Like half. in a T. So the guardrail is straight, and you guys are hitting it as a T. Yeah. Or, no, like, we hit it straight. So it went straight through the front of the car. Oh, my gosh. Into the back. Yeah. The, and, um, the, the, the actual guardrail went all the way through the car? Yeah. It's amazing that you didn't get sliced in two. Shh, it, Who it, was driving? Uh, one of the Buffalo guys, one gotcha. of the Buffalo gotcha. guys, yeah. Matter. Um, kidding. me and Blackwood were in the back seat, and we um, we both broke. I broke my femur in my right leg, and my fibia and tibia in my left shin and ankle. Let's so for, for, let's go back to this crash. What do you remember about the crash? Ooh, I so I was sleeping in the back, oh and I remember God. I woke up, and we were just spinning. And in, in my mind, like it, it feels almost comical now. I was just like, oh man, like here, here we go, like strap in, and I remember we crashed. And, like, the sound was disgusting. Like, just the ripping through the car, you could, like, hear it. It was nasty. But after the crash, it was almost, like, peaceful. Like, it was, you couldn't hear anything. There was no traffic. There was, like, dew on the ground because I was able to get to the ground somehow. And I remember just laying there. And I looked up at the front of the car, and I see the people in the front. And Puff is trying to break through the glass window to get out. And... I remember it being almost like calming. I, I was in this exact tone right now, like how I'm talking. This is exactly yeah. how I was talking. And Kevin Bennett, he goes, Daniel, are you okay? And I'm like, I went, yeah, I'm good. I think I broke both my legs, though. That, that's exactly how I said it. You're totally in shock. Yeah, I was like so at peace, so calm. And I remember it just being so cold out. It's the middle of winter. What month is it? January. January, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It was just freezing. And we couldn't find our phones to call it, like the ambulance. Luckily, Puff found his phone and was able to call. And I remember he was arguing with the um, the paramedics on the phone because they were like, just act asking for information that was hard for us to get at the time. Yeah. Like, what highway are you near? Like, right, what exit right. are you near? Yeah. It's like we don't know. We think our friend is dead in the back seat. Was um, that Blackwood? Yeah, we thought Blackwood was dead in the back seat. Was he he's, unconscious? He's completely knocked out. Wow. I'm laying on the grass. I, I can't move at all, and I think I'm about to get hypothermia. It's so yeah. cold. And uh, we were just all in such shock, and luckily the paramedics come. Now, the, the thing that made me mad most is the paramedic says, oh, can you stand up? And I said, oh, I think my legs are broken. And they go, well, you got to try. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> how do you want me to try? Like, sure they're broken. How do you want me to go about this? I'm pretty yeah. sure they're broken. And then I remember we went to the hospital, and – my mom showed up, and um, Pepper showed up, and um, then I went into surgery. So was in what, was the, what was the total? You broke what? Uh, my femur and my right leg. So that's your bone from your hip to your that's knee. That's the big one. Yeah. yeah, that's the big one. And then my fibula and my tibia and fibula in my left shin and left ankle. 
Wow. So yeah. you wake up from surgery, and what's the prognosis? Ooh, I, I remember right before I was going into surgery, my mom was with me, and she, she asked, actually, the doctor. She was like, well, do you think he'll, he'll ever be able to wrestle again? And the doctor was so nonchalant. He was like, yeah, he'll, I think he'll be able to. Like, he should be good. But, in, like, that was the last thing on my mind. I think my yeah. mom thought that that was, like, what I the wanted. The first thing on your mind, yeah. To, to feel peace. And I have the best mom in the world. You know? <laughs> um, but I remember I came out of surgery, and I, f I felt good. I was surrounded by people who loved me. I was surrounded by people who I really cared about and who clearly cared about me because they're coming to a hospital to right. see me at my worst. And I remember the first couple days after, I just felt so blessed to be alive and so blessed to have such a good support team around me. I know it sounds corny, but no. those moments like that, it really it really makes you feel grateful for life. Yeah. So what were the injuries that some of the other guys had? Kevin broke his, the same thing in his left ankle, but he didn't break his femur. And I think he had some head trauma mm. as well at first, but he's okay now. Mm. And then Puff and Bennett, who were in the front seats, they were fine, luckily. And I, I think, f I remember... Right after surgery, I said to my mom, I said, thank God it was me and Kevin that got hurt because Kevin Bennett in the front had just had a baby. And then Puff, also in the front, weighs, he's a big man. He weighs yeah. like 400 pounds. Yeah. So I don't know how he would have recovered. And right. It would have been bad for Kevin to have to take off work when he just has a newborn baby and yeah. stuff. So thank God it was me and Kevin are the ones that got hurt. Did you have to do any, like, learning how to walk or anything like that again or just had to wait for the healing and you were fine uh, we i had a uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy in the hospital so they had to teach me how to like get on and off the toilet get out and out of bed those kind of things gotcha like, simple everyday habits that was the occupational therapy that was the biggest um the doctor's biggest concern for me to go home so when you guys put a, a camera camera for gofundme i'm assuming how much did you get from that did you i think the GoFundMe total, I want to say, was like, I think forty thousand dollars, something like that. It were was, you were you like blown away by the amount of support that you got? I was so blown away. I mean, when I saw you donated, fit, like Finn Balor, or CM Punk, like these people who, like you said, it could have been anybody. Yeah. Everybody knows what it's like to drive. If you're yeah. if you're an indie wrestler, you know what it's like to drive, and it could that could have been anybody. And that's not something that you necessarily think about when you're going on a road trip. You're right. For a wrestling show. You're just concerned about, oh, man, I hope we get trans money for the show. <laughs> exactly. And right. I, 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 hope, I hope there's a restaurant open after the <laughs> yeah. show so I don't have to eat McDonald's. You're not worried about, oh, man, I hope I make it home alive.